I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we get creative with Create. Hopefully you guys are ready. Now jumping back into some more All The Mods 9, today we are going to dive into even more creative items. These items are going to be more around the tech side of things, and well, I'm going to be setting up some insane Create Farms. Now, just to recap, the Aldermod Star is insanely difficult to craft, in my opinion. It takes a lot of hours to get everything required for it, but is incredibly satisfying and fun to do, especially in a pack that's considered a kitchen sink pack, something that's really accessible for everyone. Now, I have been on the hunt for all of the creative items. This is the creative chapter in the quest book here, and we have had everything made except for the pressure chapter, which is tech, and then also the creative, which is tech, or the create creative. <laughs> getting creative, it's kind of funny. Um, the side of things, right? And I want to focus right now on getting the create stuff set up. And uh, that's because the pneumatic craft is going to take a little bit of time to sort of get going. But the create, getting access to a creative motor is insane. And also a blaze cake is insane. Blaze cakes are so nice. Now the creative motor is going to give us access to infinite stress units and we can adjust it to whatever we want to set it to speed-wise. So this thing behind me is producing uh, several, it's producing like over 170,000 uh, SU, and that's stress units, right? And we could essentially set up infinite amounts of stress units with just one block space <laughs> with this creative machine. And the blaze cake lets me do something even more insane. Down under here, we have these blaze burners that are essentially heating this tank. And if you right click a, one of those creative cakes onto a blaze burner, it lets you toggle the state, the heating state that it is in, allowing you to set it to superheated, or you could even set it to any of the other different temperatures, uh, including not on, just regular heated or superheated. Now out of those two creative items, this one is actually a little bit more difficult to actually achieve. Now we do need to make ourselves a blaze cake. Um, so there's no getting around that. And we're also going to need this Trees Leech Cake right here, which does require a few farmable items that we have access to. Now, let's first start with uh, getting that cake right here. So this cake is, seems kind of insane, honestly, to get. And uh, it does have huge, huge saturation on this 20 haunches worth. That is a ton of saturation. So this is definitely a top tier food, in my opinion. Um, and making it just requires us to buy a couple ingredients from our little market guy over here. So we're going to need vanilla beans. Um, so let's go ahead and buy those. And then we're also going to need soybeans. So we can search in here for soybeans. And there we go. We have both. Now, these are uh, easy to farm. We just need to bone mill them on some farmland. Boop and boop. And then we just bone mill them a few times. We don't need a lot of this stuff because we really only need one uh, of these cakes in order to get this blaze cake. So here we go. We have ourselves some whipping cream and then we are going to need some flour, it looks like. Now this is made inside of a milling machine. This is probably the easiest way to get it is by just setting up a millstone and then doing this by hand with create. Or we can tap into any of our power that we have over there. That could also work. Um, so we just need to probably use a gearbox if we do this. But if you do it by hand, that is kind of easy. You just need to use a hand crank. But in my case, I should be able to use a gearbox here with a cog on top and then just tap into a millstone right here. And I think we can take wheat and just drop it into the top. If I remember correctly, yes, this works just like a hopper. And that is producing wheat flour. Now to obtain molasses, it requires us to have a campfire. Uh, which is kind of interesting. So we're going to place down ourselves a campfire here, and then we're just going to cook some of this on the campfire to get molasses. Funny thing is, I've actually watched the process of molasses making, and it is such an oddly satisfying thing to watch. Man, I've just seen it in person, and then just getting... Oh, man, it's, it's fantastic to watch. Honestly, like, the production of just all of the sugar-related stuff in general is pretty satisfying. Now we get to use all of this to make rum. One of my favorite alcohols, believe it or not. I don't really like alcohol, but rum has got to be one of my favorites. And then without further ado, we should be able to craft this cake. Looky there. Now, to be able to make the blaze cakes, I am going to need a crushing wheel, or you can use a pulverizer from a thermal. Uh, I do want to use the crushing wheel. So right here, I have some encased chain drives 
and we're just directing some of our excess power over here. And I did see that this is going to need to be rotated with a gearbox to get it going in the right direction. And look at there, these are spinning in the appropriate direction with just a gearbox here, gearbox here, and then I have a chain drive running down the middle. And I could set the chain drive, which is down here. I can have this also sort of hidden as well if I really wanted to, um, just like this and have that going up the line. And then I can place my two wheels and get our pair of giants going. <laughs> Look at that. Now the compacting of the blaze cake requires cinder flour and to get cinder flour, that's just netherrack. So let's drop some netherrack in here to get ourselves some cinder flour and also try not to fall into this thing as getting trapped in here will kill you. And I think it will kill you no matter what armor you're in, even if you're in mechanisms armor. So there we go. The two giants have kind of pooped out a little bit of cinder flower, <laughs> which you gotta love. So after that, we just need a press that's going to go into a basin. And then we just need to toss in our egg, sugar, and cinder flour. And that is going to press everything in there. And we should get ourselves, hopefully, oh, not sugar cubes. We're gonna need something specific. I guess with the sugar, maybe if we, set this in one at a time, it will actually craft. Um, that's something that you have to do with create, right? So this will do one at a time. And now that we have the product, you can set it as a recipe filter, and then you can just toss them all in and it should all work just like, well, not if you put the right ingredients in, just like this. There we go. And then it will only give you that because this process right here can also compact two by two base recipes. And then we just need to give it some lava. So a couple of things we're gonna need for this is we're gonna need a uh, spout. So just a simple spout on top of a depot, for example, or you can use a, a belt. It doesn't need rotational power or anything for this to work. We simply need access to lava. Um, so we could set this up. Let's actually grab that tank, place it upside down, make sure it's set to our lava channel. There we go. And then we just need to pipe it in, for example, with the pipes mod, that absolutely works. Um, and I'll just use whatever upgrades. We, actually, we don't even need any upgrades. This should just work without any upgrades. And then we'll set that to make sure it fills the spout. And then we just need to right click these on here. And that is going to make blaze cakes for us. Look how cool that is. So now all we need to do is change this over to a mixer. And to be able to change it to a mixer, we're gonna have to kind of rotate our power a little bit and uh, finagle this a bit. And also we're gonna need to superheat a blaze burner. So to get our mixer up and running, I'm gonna go ahead and place myself a vertical gearbox running off of this with a cog. And then I'm just going to place this into the basin, just like that. And now our mixer is up and running, ready to go. Now I know this might seem kind of crazy since I did just make blaze cakes and I could just superheat the blaze burner by just clicking a blaze cake on there. But I do want to show you another way that you could potentially get this going if you just wanted to make one blaze cake. And that is you can actually get it to superheat with this setup right here. So this is biofuel that I've just been kind of casually producing over here. And this is just a bioreactor and I'm just feeding it wheat, seeds and saplings, giving it a 33% efficiency, not that great. And also giving it some water. And this is producing this material. And the cool part about this particular biofuel is it will actually superheat the blaze burner if you have it converted over to the straw version. So when I say straw version, if I give this a straw from Create Crafts and Additions, it will then turn into a blaze burner with a straw. And then we can just click a bucket of bio on here. And that is now superheated. Isn't that crazy? So now that it's superheated, even though I could have just clicked a blaze cake on it, we're going to toss this in and the cake and then the star. That is going to mix together to give us a creative blaze cake. That is ridiculous. Now, the cool part about the blaze cake is if we break this blaze and we just place it anywhere, we can now toggle it. So this is what I was meaning by toggle. This is now infinitely going to burn like this. It's also going to stay infinite on this version as well. Um, and these all act in their own different ways. Um, and you can kind of see this acts as like a soul fire. This acts as a normal campfire and they will work with fans. So there's still another creative item that we need to make. And that is going to be to create the creative motor. And it's honestly pretty straightforward and easy to put together. So all I need to make this is technically a three by three crafter. We'll have large cogs on the top and uh, the bottom like this, making a triangle. And then we're gonna have two shafts on the sides. We're gonna have a gearbox in the middle. 
two cogwheels on the top, and then an all the mod star in the center. And last but not least, we need to activate it with some redstone. And this is going to make our creative motor. That is amazing. And it's right here inside of this barrel, ready to go. This feels so good. Now we've got to use this thing because what's the point of making it if we're not gonna utilize it? So I want to make an insane smelting, haunting, and washing farm using the create mod. Now for these super smelters, I wanna build out a prototype and this is gonna be great in multiple different ways. Um, one of them is the fact that I can make a schematic and actually share it with you. Um, and you can use the schematic cannon to paste it in, but also I can copy that schematic and I can paste it where I want it, uh, which is gonna be very helpful. Now I'm gonna be using these smart shoots just like you see here. And the idea is that we're gonna have these depots that are on top that are gonna have items dropped onto them. Then we're gonna use fans to blow across these depots, all of our different sort of materials. And we can take a look at the encased fans and create adds all of these crazy recipes here. Everything from uh, blasting, which is going to be like a furnace, to haunting, which converts a lot of items into different kind of items. And then we have cooking, which is for food related items. And then we have washing, which is all kinds of items. And I really want the washing one specifically because it allows me to make oxidized copper rel relatively quick. Now I'm gonna be building this out in a three by three, but you could honestly probably build this out in a two by two and even a, a single if you really wanted to. All right, so I expanded this out just a little bit, but just to kind of let you see what it's actually gonna look like, it's gonna be like this. Now I went ahead and built the item vaults out like this because when it's as one unit like this, it will evenly distribute what's inside automatically onto these bottom slots, which is perfect because this acts as one whole inventory and the same thing is gonna have to happen down here. And so what we should have happen is we should have our items drop onto the depot. They will then process and then we'll get shooted down to the item vaults. And this one spot will have this fan blowing on it. It'll have four vans essentially blowing on it, which should be very, very quick and that goes for all of these slots. Now you may be thinking, Chosen, well, how do you contain the liquids? If you're going to, for example, use water and you're going to, for example, use lava for the blasting, how are you gonna do that? Well, let me show you something. Blaze burners can actually act as lava. So if we go ahead and we make sure these are heated, it can actually act as lava. So this is now blowing. Right now it's actually acting more like a campfire. It will actually cook food. But if we put it into this state, it is now orange, which will then start to melt items. Look at that. So this, I mean, it went straight in here. We'll set up the filters in a moment, but you can see right here. And even this version will also do the same thing. Um, now, as far as water goes, what we can do for water is we can place a leaf in here. And this is available in this version, which is 120. Uh, you can't do this in like prior versions. This is something fairly new, but you can place water logged leaves and this will fan right through it, containing the water and everything just like that. I love this new feature. Then the idea is to have a crafter up on the top that is essentially going to send out all of the items that are gonna be required. And then we're gonna have an importer at the bottom that should be able to pull the items out of this setup. Now, if you wanna build this out for the power to be able to feed this and make these go forward, I'm using encased chain drives on the back here. Then another chain drive right here, just to simply carry the signal. You can use a shaft if you want. And then two gearboxes to make sure it flips the signal. And then we have it going back over here. Uh, and that's going straight and just continuing to repeat this process by placing this here and two gearboxes side by side just like that and there we go this is blowing quite a bit here and uh that is fantastic that was a bad pun i can't help it sometimes the like dad in me just just leaks out from time to time now just to make it look good i went ahead and just added the rest here but it's not necessary so now that i know how big this is going to be i think what i'm going to end up doing is i am going to create a schematic for this now to make a schematic we're going to make a schematic and quill and this is really really cool we're gonna click this location here, and then up top I set another leaf, and then I just connect those, and this is now gonna be contained inside of this area. So I can go ahead and leave this, and I can break these, and this still is going to contain that bounding box. So there we go, we have it now selected. Now all I need to do is right click, and then just name it. We can just name it 
super processor. Here we go, super processor. And then we hit save. Now this is going to save to our schematic folder that is inside of our instance. That's pretty darn cool. And you can actually share those files. I'm actually gonna have this posted on the Discord. So be sure to check out my Discord. I will have it actually pinned in the general chat. If you want this schematic, be sure to get it there. I'll have it, like I said, pinned in the top right of the general chat. So now that I have that file saved, we can actually access that file and we are going to need a create schematic table to do this. So we place the table down and then inside of here, we can see all the schematics that are inside of our schematics folder, including the new one. And you can actually click this button to open up that folder. So if you want a quick access to that folder and you just downloaded it from the discord, all you got to do is click this and that's going to open up the folder where you can put it in. Now, we are gonna need another thing that is going to be called an empty schematic, which is what you need to use to make the schematic in Quill. And then we put this inside and then we just simply hit the button. Bam, now we have ourselves a schematic and this is ready to go inside of a schematic cannon. But what's really cool about this is you can actually use this to size things up. So if I click this down, we can see this in the world. And if I hold down Alt, I can change modes such as my position or my movement on my X and Y or my Y level and so on and so forth. And then while I have that selected, I can hold down control and scroll wheel to move it into position. This is so cool. And that includes going in different directions. Um, so if I want to, for example, move it left to right, I should be able to do that by simply changing directions. Like here is another position. You can just, alt just change the whole placement of the whole thing. You can even rotate it in different ways, which is just amazing looking when you see this. Um, and uh, yes, there's even to mirror it, uh, you can do that as well. But I believe on the horizontal, just depends on what direction you're looking. Um, so to change the direction, you just need to stand in that position. Now for me, I just want to kind of use this as a way to see where I want to place these things. Um, do I want it level with the floor? I really don't know just yet. Um, if I go ahead and play around with this, I can just see it visually. So let's take the Y level down and see what it looks like in the floor. You know what? I don't actually hate that uh, with it being in the floor. And we might be able to see it a little better. Or even, yeah, I really actually, I like it in the floor like that. 100% having this placed in makes it so much easier to figure out exactly how big this room needs to be and how much space I'm going to need. Now, the cool part about this is I actually don't have to dig down because of the way the schematic cannon works. I should be able to just place this like in the center of the room, just give it some gunpowder and it's gonna just go up and running. Um, so it'll fill up with gunpowder just like that. And then I have my schematic technically in place. This is kind of where I want it. And so if I put that schematic in here, it's going to say ready. However, what I do want to do is go into the printer settings and I want to set these very specifically. So you can say don't replace solid blocks. You can say replace solid blocks with empty. And I, I think I kind of want replace solid blocks with empty. And there is replace solid blocks with solid. Um, and if I do solid bl blocks with empty like that, then what it's going to do is it's going to any of the empty blocks that we had set, it is going to go ahead and, and break them. Um, so if we put a barrel, it does, uh, that should be plenty for us as just a regular barrel um, next to this or a backpack or really anything. Then we can start to detect the inventory. And so we'll put a clipboard in here. That clipboard is then going to give us a material checklist and we can see everything that we're going to need. And the cool part is, is it will update. So as we put this in here and we put our item vaults in and so on and so forth, and we go in with create and let's put our casings in. Let's see, what was some other things? Some depots, um, I think fans, we can put our fans in there. Um, and just having all of these ingredients inside of here is going to allow this to work. I think uh, gearboxes, right, was another one. So all of these items going in, and then we can just put our material checklist in again, it's gonna re-update. And then we'll be able to see, okay, we have everything. So now that we know we have everything and we're ready to go, we just hit ready and it should just build it. And it may seem like it's not working, but it is going to be clearing out. And a cool thing you can do is you can actually use a time in the bottle on it. It's not crazy fast. Um, and it is a really cool thing to actually watch work. And you're gonna see down here, it is currently placing in the blocks. Um, it doesn't look like it's clearing out all of the air blocks. I have, I can't really tell just yet. But we can accelerate it and make it go a bit faster. 
Oh, it is clearing out the air blocks. Okay, so that's exactly what we wanted. We want all of these air blocks to be filled in uh, with, with air, or all of these solid blocks to be filled in with air. But you can make it ignore the air blocks, uh, which is also really nice if you're trying to put this into like an area that already had a build or something. But there we go. So I can accelerate this quite fast. <laughs> and it will almost insta-build the thing. I mean, if I had this all the way up, it would definitely insta-build. But watch it. It's just printing it. How cool is that? Now, this is a visual bug. We can actually go in here and fix that. This should fix itself. There we go. And the bottom one might need to be done as well. But we've essentially got this all set up now. Look at that. They place all of our blocks in. And we get to just do this again. So... Um, I should be able to pull this out. It is now an empty schematic. And I'll just put it in here and just rinse and repeat. We'll put our processor in here. I'll click the ground, finding out where I want to place this one. And then just simply move it around. So I can move it on the Y, for example, placing it just like we want. And I want this three blocks away from the other one. So <laughs> we'll move this one again. And this is just so fun. I mean, I, I love this. And we just want to get this lined up just like that one and then this one's also ready to go so all we have to do is just put it in here and rinse and repeat now after a lot of building i now have somewhat of a template set up and i think it's beautiful but it is missing a lot of stuff including all of these copper blocks but notice these are oxidized because of the time spent because we have this set up we should be able to basically oxidize copper insanely fast now and the cool part about this whole setup is I am just using this. I mean, you could power this technically off of like a, a windmill or something, or even a couple of water wheels. Um, you don't really need a lot of RPM. This is only spinning at 16 RPM, very, very slow. And uh, it is powering all of this. Um, notice I just carried my signal, basically. I guess you can call it a signal. Our stress units, we got it spinning all just rotating right along. They're all connected and all spinning in the appropriate direction, which is exactly what we want. Now, on the top, I did go ahead and decide to use chutes instead of the, uh, or sorry, funnels instead of chutes. Uh, but down here, we are going to need to set up all of our chutes. But first, we need to figure out what each of these are going to be. Now, to do this, all we need to do is set up our attribute filters. This is what's going to allow this to set on the depot while processing and then automatically pull out the final product. And this is actually kind of simple. We just need to use this thing called an attribute filter from Create. And this allows us to essentially use tags inside of Create so let's go ahead and set up our smelting setup. All I got to do is put an item that can be smelted in this case and select the can be smelted right here. And then I just need to add the attribute to the list. And you can see this says it can now be smelted. And you can add multiple attributes technically to this list. And you can even sort um, whether it accepts just one of those attributes or accepts all of them or needs all of them and so on and so forth. But what we're going to do with this is basically tell this whole uh, filter set that we do not want to let things that can be smelted through. So I am going to make a deny list from this. So now this is essentially set up and checking, can it be smelted? If it can be smelted, do not let it through. And then whenever it turns into an item that can no longer be smelted uh, in this process, then it will just flow right through and be a finished product. Now, the same thing needs to happen, for example, on the raw cod. This can be set to can be smoked. In this case, and then we want to add the attribute and then deny list and accept. And then same for this filter set, except this is going to actually be can be haunted. So we'll add that deny. Make sure you are clicking the ad. I've actually messed up a fair few times where I thought I had the filter in place and then realized I did not. Now, this one should have a can be washed, I believe. But I noticed this actually doesn't have that can be washed. But I, I'm almost positive there is a washing feature, or at least there was a washing feature, um, oxidized. I'm almost positive we had an oxidized, huh, it's actually through weathering, I guess. Oh man, I was hoping I could oxidize this way, but I guess not. That really should be added to the create washing, honestly, but we can use sand instead, and this will have a can be washed. So we'll go ahead and set that. And keep in mind, this isn't saying sand is the filter. It's just saying what tag is associated with. You could even say is tagged sand color to, to add like an entire list of sand technically to these filters. 
and they will work as filters in all of the create machines. And then down here, I just need to get all of these placed in and they go inside the filter slot. For example, this one being smelting. So just like this, I have just about everything set up. We have our cooking over here and then we have our haunting and then we have our washing. This one needs to be our blasting. So to be able to make it actually blast, we are going to use our blaze creative cake. Oh man, so create and then I should have that creative blaze cake in here. It feels so weird, honestly, doing this. I'm also going to set these. Um, I accidentally placed it inside of the bottom down there. That is kind of a problem. I'm pretty sure I put that in here. By the way, we can just simply get things out of here by placing that on the outside. <laughs> and that allows us to pull things out. But we can also pull things out, uh, as you're going to see here in a moment, with, uh, with other means. But let's go ahead and set all of these to superheated just for the lulls. I think it just would look cool just having these all superheated. And there we go. So now that is blast. You can see that is red hot in there. And then over here, this is smoking hot. And then we have the the ghostly hot. I honestly don't know what temperature that would be. And then we got the wet. That's just, yeah, that's just the moist right here. Now, I haven't been able to test this, but I do want to sort of run this as a my initial test. Let's go ahead and do like a bulk haunting. And I want to use a netherite crafter to make sure that we can send the items incredibly fast into the vault. Um, and then I'm going to rotate this. And I just want to see, will the crafter automatically insert into the item vault? Because I know we can use like exporters to send items into the item vaults. And I think we can even hopper into an item vault. So I don't know why the crafter wouldn't be able to insert into here, but we'll see how that goes. So let's go into refined and I guess moment of truth testing this all out to see if it's going to work. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. Okay, so that is in. Now we just need to make a pattern that's for haunting. So let's do this. We already have a pattern for making ink. Um, I don't know if we have an auto craft for ink. We do. Okay, so we're good there. Um, but I can actually make regular ink turn into glow ink from haunting. So let's set up this recipe. Now, I don't know if I want to leave it like this by default. I think what I might want to do is actually set this to 64, 64 instead of default. That way, when every time it cra creates the operation, it's going to send st a stack at a time uh, as a minimum. And so there we go. We've got that process. We could probably even set more than that. Um, if we really wanted to, probably the best bet would be doing nine since we do have the operation to be able to do nine at a time. But I just want to make sure that this even works in the first place. Let's place this in and then let's go ahead and request, I don't know, 256. And let's see, is that going to go in there? So I am noticing that has gone in and is being processed. Um, so that must mean that it did send it as intended. Very interesting. And I think it's already done. No. Oh, it is already done. However, we don't have an importer down here just yet. So that was how quick that went in. We already have 256 ink sacks. Uh, that was insanely fast. I, uh, we need to get importers now hooked up to the bottom of these. So now that I have all of this up and running and I have all of my importers on here, I think it might be time to actually set up one of the craziest parts of this. And that's actually processing some more of our material from our original mob farm. Uh, this has been able to produce a ton of resources from our crusher setup over here. That is just absolutely insanity. Uh, but there's still way more resources than we know what to do with. And what I want to do is I want to see how crazy this can actually produce something like copper, for example. So let's take a barrel and let's go ahead and get a filter set up. So we have copper in here. I have a, a, a little bit of these copper raw blocks, but we have tons of those copper raw blocks elsewhere. So if I go ahead in this filter and I set this to make sure to only pull out with a creative upgrade, by the way, we set this to only pull out these blocks, then we should be able to send that into this chest. And then we can, of course, add any other blocks down the road but that should now be stored to this filter. Um, that's kind of a nice way to do it is just by placing it down and storing it by hand. And let's go ahead and head into our other dimension. And I just wanna see how fast this is gonna start producing copper blocks. You can see we have 361, and this is really gonna, I think, show off the smelting capabilities. Um, so let's head into what was our quarry area. 
And back here, like I said, we have so many copper, 219,000 copper. And uh, I wanna start processing all of these by blocks now. And I think that's going to be fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and put a universal pipe in. And then this is going to fill almost instantaneously. It's going to be kind of ridiculous. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We will wrench this, make sure to put this upgrade in. And now that should technically not be filled with anything else. Uh, this should be under whitelist mode. I don't know why it did fill with other things. Maybe at first it doesn't detect that it has a filter. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, let's see if I pull out all of this and put it back in here. Okay. Now it looks like it is working. It was just weird that it initially didn't follow its filter. But if we head back to the base, the goal is to make sure that this pipe sends these items in. Oh boy. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and set this one. Now, this is going to start sending in the items initially. So we should have items dropping down there. But if we put this upgrade in, that should start sending this. And this whole thing should start to be loaded with these resources. Now, I'm it's only got one in here, so I don't know. Oh, nope, it's filling up. There's 10,000, 12,000 blocks of raw copper being stored in here. Okay, that is a lot of materials, by the way. And those all should be dropping down and getting processed. And we can look at how fast this is operating right now. Just look at this. These are producing blocks of copper this fast. We're about to hit three, we're at 3,000 blocks now. We just had 300. Yeah, this right here is a processing beast. Now, is this faster than using the actual all the modium furnace? Well, the unobtainium furnace? Uh, probably not. This is probably nowhere near as fast as just dumping this into that. However, this is way more fun and I think way cooler. And you know, sometimes that's just what makes this game fun. And that's what keeps me motivated. So if you enjoyed today's episode and you learned something new, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. And guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to Pickles. Thank you so much, by the way, for supporting me over on the Discord and becoming a Discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible, getting access to those world downloads and all that fun jazz. Guys, I thank you so very much, and I hope to see you. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.